this is uh, basically part two for the more circle. So we're going to uh, basically go through an example and solve uh, more circle uh, basically three different ways um, and figure out uh, basically for this initial stress state where sigma xx equals 22 megapascals, sigma yy is equal to 10 megapascals, and tau xy is equal to 6 megapascals. What is the stress state of a plane inclined at 30 degrees counterclockwise? And then draw more circle to find the principal stress state. So we are going to answer uh, basically all of those questions uh, and probably more. Uh, so uh, we'll go ahead and get those, uh, get that started and yeah, uh, solve this problem. So uh, there was three ways basically we kind of talked about last time um, and we introduced kind of the equations on how to uh, basically find a stress state of any kind of arbitrary, uh, at any arbitrary angle. Uh, for a given you know, initial stress state. So let's go ahead and we're going to use Mathematica to solve this problem. So the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to define my stress tensor. So my stress, the original stress, was 22, 6, 0. And we'll see this in just a second. So 22 and sigma xx. I'm going to do 6, 10, 0. These are all in megapascals. So I'm going to actually go ahead and uh, multiply this because we always want to be in units of SI. So mega 10 to the minus 6, or 10 to the 6, excuse me. And I'm going to look at this, uh, leave that there. We can also look at stress as matrix form as well. So that is my stress tensor. So uh, this is my sigma xx, this is my sigma yy, and this is my tau xy again because we know uh, that this uh, tensor is symmetric. And um, that's why these are equal, and we can see that we're also in a plane stress state, in the xy plane. So, that's our stress tensor. I just kind of want to write it down, write it down first. But now, let's figure out what's the stress state of a plane inclined at 30 degrees counterclockwise. So, first thing, again, in this class, um, or our convention is tension positive, compression negative, counterclockwise positive, clockwise negative. So, let's take a step back and uh, define uh, these expressions right here. So let's go ahead. I am going to, uh, we're just going to basically write this, uh, write these values in Mathematica, and we're just going to plug and chug. Uh, this is the plug and chug method. We'll solve this uh, and actually do this, and we'll kind of explain why it's not the best way um, that I would use to kind of solve, especially more complex problems. So we can define stress or sigma, sigma xx prime is equal to, and again, uh, this is going to be a little bit boring, but please bear with me, sig xx uh, plus sig yy, all of this divided by 2 plus, oh, I'm going to steal this, copy, paste, I'm going to subtract here, multiply everything by my cosine of 2 theta. This 2 theta is going to come in, uh, into play a little bit later. To theta, and I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to put this in, I'll leave it here, plus tau xy times sine of 2 theta. This theta, again, that will be important in just a bit. So this is my sigma xx prime. I'm going to also do the same thing here. The only thing that changes is a minus. And I also want to figure out what is my tau xy prime. Uh, that should be yy, excuse me. Reevaluate, reevaluate. Tau xy prime is equal to minus sig xx minus sig yy, all divided by 2, and then multiply all that by. I know this is not the most exciting, but, and this is exactly why you don't want to use this method. How are you really going to memorize this uh, when you're on the job or if you're at an interview? Uh, can't really do that. So tau xy times cosine of t theta. Excellent. So we want the rotation uh, when it is counterclockwise 30 degrees, uh, counterclockwise positive. So all we're going to do is just plug and chug. So sigma xx prime slash dot. I'm going to replace sig xx and do that to 22 times 10 to the 6. I'm going to replace sig yy goes to 10 times 10 to the 6. And I'm going to do tau xy goes to uh, 6 times 10 to the 6. 
So just plugging in for the values, and I'm going to put theta. Theta goes to 30. Uh, we are going to actually set this in uh, basically in your degree mode uh, here. Um, so I need to kind of make one quick change. So I'm going to change this to degree, change this to degree, degree, degree. This. I need to do this degree. Excuse me. So I'm going to just split through that in there. We get a value. We need to speak capital N. Excuse me. And there's your answer there. That's your sigma xx prime. What about yy prime? Just plugging and chugging. And then finally, we'll get our tau xy prime. So those are your values. That's it. That's your answer. So you kind of just plug and chug into there uh, at this point, and that's all you're uh, really left with. So that would be your answer uh, for this problem if you're kind of doing uh, you know, this method. So let's, again, not the most ideal method uh, when you're kind of trying to solve for the, uh, you know, these problems, uh, but we're not done here. So this gives us what is our X prime, uh, y, uh, X, X prime, Y, Y prime, and our new coordinate system, our new values uh, for this kind of 30 degree coordinate system. But we need to kind of take this a step further. So we need to draw more circle. We'll, we'll take up with this later, but we can also find the principal stress state uh, using these other expressions over here, right? So we talked about this last time. We could find what is the theta that maximizes uh, my principal stress state here. So I can kind of uh, plug this in and figure out what is my sigma 1, what is my sigma 2. So again, I'm just going to kind of define these values again. So uh, sigma 1 is equal to, uh, again, boring, but stick, stick with me, plus sigma yy divided by 2 plus square root of uh, this expression here. I'm going to copy root of this squared plus tau xy xy squared and that's it and I'm going to do the same thing for sigma 2 it's just the same value here but subtract it oops uh, again issue with this should be sig 2 sigma 1 so again this is your maximum normal stress state and sigma 2 is going to be your, your minimal uh, normal stress uh, value here. Because again, this will always, sigma will be larger than sigma 2, uh, always, unless you're in compression. But anyways, so we also have kind of this expression for solving for what angle will this occur at. So you always kind of want to say, you know, and we'll see this more again, graphically more circle, but what is the angle which is going to maximize uh, that value here? So we're going to figure that out in just a second, or maximizes your normal stress state. And that's given to us by tan. We need to solve tan tangent of 2 times theta. And again, this is just given in this expression right here. Once you take the derivative, you set it equal to 0. We set tan equals, and we're going to solve for uh, tau xy. That's y divided by uh, again, this value here. Copy and paste, make it a little bit easier. And I'm going to do, uh, actually here I'm actually going to define tau xy equals 6 times 10 to 6. Uh, sig xx equals 22 times 10 to the 6. And sig yy let me scroll down here. Sig yy equals 10 times 10 to the 6. Mega Pascals. All right, Pascals actually. So I'm going to solve for theta. Uh, again, I want to have it in, let's just have it in degree mode already. I'm going to do solve for theta. Uh, it does not like uh, essentially the degree here. So instead, what I'm going to do is leave it and I'm going to convert right now. So 
this is the conditional expression, so half uh, times uh, 24. So what I'm going to kind of do inside of here is I'm just going to take this out. So if I want to convert to degrees, this value is pi over 8, pi divided by 8, times 180 degrees divided by pi. So 22.5 degrees, that is where my uh, stress state is maximized for normal stresses. So I need to do a rotation in real space theta equal to 22.5 degrees in order to maximize my normal stresses. Uh, you can figure out your tau max too. So tau xy max is going to be equal to just this last portion here. Uh, so it will be uh, square root of this guy. I'm going to switch this to n. And you can also figure out, okay, what is what is sig 1? What is sig 2? And those are the values. That's it. So we've got our values there. That's it. We figured out, all right, what is more circle? When is, uh, what are my normal stresses uh, maximized? And what is my tau xy max? So that's the principal stress state. So the principal stress state will just be, uh, whenever you're doing normal stresses, you'll see, actually we'll see visually that your tau xy uh, is going to be effectively, is, is going to be zero uh, for your no principal normal stress state. So, and actually we can prove that up here. So if I do, um, let's do tau xy prime slash dot theta goes to 22.5, zero. It's showing you at that rotation, at that rotation of theta, we're at zero. So whenever you're at your principal or your you know principal stress state, your maximum normal stress uh, stresses, your tau is zero. You have no shear stress. You're only in a pure um, pure normal stress state. And actually, you can, can see that by uh, your your tensor is going to be diagonalized. And again, we'll see that when we took a look at the linear algebra approach. So this is plugging and chugging. But again, you could get these values and you could use this as a check, but are you going to remember this on an interview? No, probably not. Also, when I give you more complex problems, like instead of just asking you for the normal stress state, I could say, give me the stress state of a plane that's uh, 17 degrees clockwise rotation from your uh, principal stress state. So as you start to do more complex rotations, it's hard to kind of keep track of where you're at. So the second method, the way that we're going to kind of solve uh, and figure out this problem is using uh, kind of the more circle approach. Uh, so to do that, we are going to... Uh, Kind of look at this and plot this uh, visually here. So let's take a peek and figure out uh, how to kind of do this problem using more circle. So we are basically going to define uh, and actually look at kind of these coordinates. So let's look at our stress state again. So stress, let's look at this guy. Matrix form. So if I have uh, this value here, or, you know, if I, if I have this stress state, we talked about last time, you can plot uh, and use kind of this Moore circle uh, that Otto Moore kind of came up with, where you have your center of the circle is this value, and your radius of the circle is this value. Actually, you don't even need to kind of memorize this, uh, you know, it's a good double check, but you, we're going to actually solve for this initially ourselves, so we don't even have to kind of worry about this. So, let's look and kind of see, we basically have a coordinate, so I want to create a plot of uh, some sum coordinates. So these are my list of points. So I'm going to make a plot where the y-axis, and I'm going to actually draw this uh, in just a second, my y-axis is going to be my shear stresses, and my x-axis is going to be my normal stresses. So my points are going to be, and we'll see this in just a second, I'm going to keep my notation of just megapascals just to make my life a little bit easier. So I have 22, 22 6, 22 minus 6, um, 16, or see, excuse me, 10 and 6. And 10 and minus 6. So those are my points. And I'm going to do a list plot. It's not going to look fancy. These are my four coordinates. And my circle is going to move through all of these kind of coordinates. So I'm going to make this a little bit fancy just because I want to. So I'm going to do uh, frame true, uh, image size 1000, frame style directive black. Bold, 50, thickness. You know this from our, except I don't have my enough parentheses. We know this, uh, and I need plot style. 
directive. I have these points as red. Red, point size. It's a little bit larger. There we go. And let me zoom out just a bit. And you can kind of see again, these are the points that are going to go through. So let's take a step back here. Um, and actually, I want to kind of uh, draw real quick because uh, we're going to kind of see how we could kind of solve this problem graphically. Uh, it might be a little bit easier if I switch to my kind of tablet. So let's kind of draw this in a little bit nicer easier way to kind of see visually what we're, what we're going to do here. So when we're in more circle space, so we are going to be, we have, this is our stress state. You know, we've done this multiple 22, uh, 6, 6, 10. All these are megapascal. So this is our stress tensor. I'm going to make a plot of shear stress versus my normal stresses. So I'm going to have values. I'm just going to kind of write this down. Again, due to uh, symmetry considerations for a circle, 10, 22. So I'm going to have a point here, 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 here. Now, my initial stress state is basically any point kind of on here in this circle. And my circ my Mohr circle, the kind of the stress state at any given kind of rotation from an initial point here, that is going, this circle is going to pass through these points. Because any point along this circle gives me my stress state. So like this is my first, like my stress state, I'm along, you know, you know I'm at these points here. So there's some angle here in the Mohr circle space that will allow me to rotate where I'm in a place where I maximized my normal stresses, where I have zero shear stresses. We'll get to that in a second. But let's just describe, we need to figure out like what is, what's the equation for this circle. So we need to find what's the center. So what is the center? I need to find what is my radius of my circle. So I need to find what is the center point? What's the value? The coordinates specifically. What is my radius? So it's going to pass through uh, sorry, uh, the, this is kind of drawn poorly. But yeah, this should pass through the center because, uh, again, you're just drawing the diameter. What is my kind of radius here? And then what is this angle? And this angle is 2 theta. So the reason why, okay, so in more circle space, we're, whenever we draw this plot, we're in 2 theta space because those equations that we derived previously to get to rotation, they're always defined in terms of 2 theta. So we call 2 theta, I like to think of this as more circle space. So more space. But theta is like the real space. So theta is real space. So when I say like, give me a rotation uh, in certain degrees, I'm talking about real space here. But when you're trying to kind of solve this problem, you know, figure out these values for more circle, we are solving for two theta. We're in more circle space. So let's get to that in just a second. So we know, or we, you know, hopefully remember that the center is, uh, the center of your more circle is just going to be the uh, your normal stresses, so sigma xx, sigma yy, divided by 2. In this problem, we know that's going to be 22 plus 10, 32, so it should be 16 megapascals. So our center should occur at a coordinates of basically 16 and 0. But we don't even need to remember this. The radius is even worse. Like uh, So the radius equation is this kind of square root, um, square root of sigma xx, minus sigma yy, divided by 2 squared plus alex y squared. That's a hard one to remember as well. But we don't even need to use this, uh, any of these expressions. We could just use geometry considerations. So I have, I have basically a line here. I have a line. This line is defined by uh, coordinates. So I have my coordinates here are going to be 22 and 6. My coordinates here are going to be uh, 10 and minus 6. If I have two points, I could fit this line, figure out what's the slope, find where it intersects this origin here, figuring out the center. I could also find the length of this line and then divide that by 2 and I could get my radius. Once I have my radius, once I have my center point here, I can figure out what is this angle. Because I know the center point will be, you know, we'll kind of see your center point is this, 16 minus 0. So I will know this length. Uh, and actually, we could just do that uh, right now. You will know this length. 
And that's just going to be, uh, so if I have my center point, I know that this length here is going to be 22 minus 16. So that will be six. So I have a, basically you could kind of draw out the triangle. So this is our triangle. So I know this length is six. I know this radius, once I kind of plug in and solve for it uh, <laughs> in a little bit, uh, so I'm plugging in for that equation, I'll know my radius. And so then I can figure out what is two theta. So once you have that, and actually you know this, uh, this value here as well is just gonna be six. So you actually already know what is your two theta value? It's gonna be 45 degrees, because we know six and six, that circle, you know R is going to be uh, six root two megapascals, and you could solve for that problem, right? This is just geometry at this point. So knowing this, you know, kind of triangle considerations, and that's it. So that's how you just do it, you know, graphically. Once you have that two theta value, now I know what is the rotation required to get to my principal stress state. So my principal stress state is where my normal stresses are maximized. So where along this circle do I have the largest and smallest values of normal stresses? Well, it's here and it's here. What is my value of shear when I'm at this point and this point? Zero. So this is my sigma one. This is my sigma two. That's it. Those are kind of the values there. So that, that's all that we're kind of doing here in this more circle uh, space, you know, space. <laughs> um, so that's what we're trying to find. And we know that the rotation from this state, from this stress state, I'm going to have to rotate counterclockwise 45 degrees. My two theta will have to be 45, degree, uh, 45 degrees, or my theta will be 22.5. But I have to rotate counterclockwise. So more circle space, I'm going to rotate 45 degrees. In real space, I'm going to rotate 22.5 degrees because, again, we're in this two theta space. So that'll be it. And then again, you get your values once you, you know, kind of uh, add. So it'd just be your sigma one is just going to be your center plus uh, your radius. Sigma two is just going to be center minus your radius. So that's it. All the rest of those values are defined. So 16 plus six root two, 16 minus six root two. We'll get those values and we'll double check uh, Mathematica in just a second. Now, what if I were to ask you, What's the rotation required to maximize my uh, normal stress? Or, or excuse me, my shear stress. And what is my stress tensor when I've maximized my shear stresses? Well, let's look on this curve. Where are my shear stresses? My tau, where is tau maximized on this circle? It's right here, this location and this location. So what are my coordinates at that location? Well, I mean, it's, it's just given right there. We know that uh, it will be your center. So my coordinates here are going to be, I'm going to just follow it right there. My coordinates will be the center time, and then it will be your radius. So my tau max should be 6 root 2 megapascals. Again, and then what's the rotation required to get to here? Well, we know this is a right angle, right? 90 degrees, we know that two theta is 45. So I also, to get to tau max, I'm gonna rotate clockwise, or excuse, uh, uh, ooh, uh, excuse me, we're gonna rotate uh, clockwise here, excuse me. Clockwise for, uh, I apologize for that. <laughs> we're gonna rotate clockwise to get to our maximum uh, normal stress state. We are gonna rotate counterclockwise 45 degrees in two theta space, or 22.5 in theta space, in order to find our uh, maximum shear stresses. So again, it's just all this more circle rotation. And that's all you're kind of doing. So it's where, you know, where are we initial, initially moving uh, and what direction are we kind of moving in this uh, stress state? So let's kind of erase a little bit, messy. But it's a still this principle. So you just always plot whatever your kind of coordinate system is. And then you can find what is that, what is that theta? So just to kind of do this one more time, a little bit uh, nicer, now that we've kind of seen this, the procedure is just as what, as follows. So you draw your system, tau, theta, you're going to list your coordinates, six, minus six, 10, 22, 
point, 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 point. Your circle is going to go through all these points, but it'll kind of go around. Again, it's not necessarily zero. You can find your center. It's going to be 16. It'll go across this. We need to figure out what is 2 theta, what is r. So if I want to rotate and get to my maximum normal stress state, I need to go down this value of 2 theta, whatever that value is. So we found that 2 theta is equal to 45 degrees. So your theta rotation is going to be 22.5 in the clockwise direction to find sigma 1 and sigma 2. If I want to find tau xy max, my maximum shear stress, I'm going to rotate in the opposite direction to get to here and here, where I have my maximum shear stress. And that is going to be equal to, again, your basically just the radius, so 6 root 2. And that rotation will be uh, counterclockwise to theta equals 40. Because again, here we know that this is 90, 90 minus 2 theta, where 2 theta is 45, it's going to be 45 degrees. Now, let's prove that and actually do that math in Mathematica. So, switch back to my uh, other mode here. And so I'm going to do exactly kind of what I mentioned. So I'm going to figure out what is the line. I'm going to fit, uh, I'm going to take out uh, a couple points. So I'm going to take out points. Uh, I'm going to take out points 1, just like I did, so 22 and 6, and I'm going to take out points, um, I'm going to fit points 1, and I'm going to take out points minus the last value. I'm going to fit a linear curve here. I want to see this value. So, when is this value 0? When will my curve intersect uh, the origin? So let's actually, you know, let's, let's plot this. So let's say this is my curve. So I'm going to do show, and I'm going to plot this. Plot curve from x from, let's say, let's say we just go from minus 20 to 20. Let's do it a little bit longer. Let's do a minus 40. It doesn't matter. Minus 40 to 40. And you see that it intersects. I'm going to make it a little bit nice. Plot style. Directive. Blue. I need to do this. Excuse me. There we go. So this is the curve. So now I need to figure out where is this, where's it crossing my origin? Well, we can see from this curve when y is equal to zero, it's when x is equal to 16. So my center for this equation, and you can do the same thing the other direction as well. It doesn't really matter. But again, this is why it's nice about more circle, because you could kind of pick, okay, and you could show me, all right, this is my coordinate system. So when I'm rotating to get to the maximum principal normal stresses, I'm going to go in this direction, or I'm going to go this direction to get my maximum shear. So my center is going to occur at uh, basically a coordinate of 16 and 0. Or my center is just, you know, 16 megapascals. So my center is at 16. I know uh, that this point here is at 22. So again, you could solve, uh, you know, uh, this value, for, uh, you know, you could solve for your 2 theta value just like we kind of did previously. So that, uh, if I want to take uh, basically the tangent, so my uh, of my expression, so tan, so let's solve, solve for tan of 2 times theta, set that equal to, again, opposite over adjacent, so it's going to be 6 divided by uh, opposite over adjacent, <laughs> well, it will be 6 over 6, and solve for theta, and we get the same expression, right? So pi over 8 times, again, convert to 180 divided by pi. That's it, 22.5. So again, you get the same answer. This matches exactly when we maximize our, uh, when we maximize our shear stresses, or, you know, uh, when we maximize, excuse me, our normal stresses, we found that same angle, 22.5. So again, you're getting, the, you know, essentially the same answer that we've, uh, we've obtained previously. So, 
The question on this one, uh, uh, though, initially, so this is, we've, we've figured out our Mohr circle. We've figured out the principal stress state. We can also figure out what is the maximum shear stress state. But what's the stress state of applying incline 30 degrees counterclockwise to this? Well, this, then we'd have to kind of, again, shift our angle uh, once more. So what is, or we'd have to kind of find, try to find the coordinates of once we rotate and shift 30 more degrees, again, in real space. So that means shifting 60 degrees in the opposite direction. So that's a little bit uh, kind of more complex, and that's why we want to go to our uh, kind of next uh, kind of derivation to solve that answer quickly. But we, you can still use that with, uh, you can still solve this problem using kind of geometric uh, considerations. So uh, that really shouldn't uh, kind of scare you too much. So let's actually go ahead and do that in real time. So we want to rotate 30 degrees counterclockwise. Uh, so we are going to shift, uh, and actually let's go back to our tablet mode for a second here. Uh, so let's look at uh, this value and let's solve this equation. So we want to rotate counterclockwise uh, for this value of 2 theta. So let's kind of erase this guy once more. But we could skip some steps here. So we are going to draw this here, here, here again, tau, sigma. So we are going to write uh, again 6, 6, minus 6, 6, 10. I'm going to write the center 16, 22. This value, this value, not to scale, <laughs> obviously. And this here, you know, this 2 theta, that 2 theta is equal to 45 degrees. And now we want to rotate, again, 30 degrees in real space, counterclockwise. So we're going to rotate in this direction, going this way. So our 2 theta that we're actually rotating now is, so the 2 theta is equal to 60 degrees in this direction. So... Our, our final angle, uh, where we're going to try to rotate, is going to be uh, basically 45, or 10, uh, 60 plus 45 degrees. So it's going to be equal to 105. So we can solve again, you know, kind of using this you know, geometric considerations and using that geometry. So if we pass this 90 degrees, we know we could kind of draw uh, basically kind of this angle. And you can kind of just do the math at this point, right? So it's just geometry. So 180 minus 105. So we are going to have uh, 75 degree. That will be our angle uh, basically in some magic point along here. So your 2 theta in this direction is going to be equal to 75. So if your 2 theta is 75, you are going to kind of try to figure out where is this point here and where is the point that, you know, this is falling along the curve. We know our radius. So if we know that, we know that. We can solve and figure out what are the rest of those two points of our triangle, right? So we know in this problem, so 2 theta, 2 theta is equal to 75 degrees. We know this is R. So you can figure out what is uh, this length here and what is this length here. So, again, that's just geometry at this, or at this point. Um, so, actually, let's work it out. So, we know that 2 theta is going to be, uh, we want to do cosine. So, find, uh, let's do the sine, actually, first. So, sine of 2 theta is going to be equal to x over r. We know that cosine of 2 theta is going to be x, uh, excuse me, cosine of 2 theta, we'll call this y. It's going to be equal to y over r. And now you can just solve for y and x, and then you'll get your coordinate system. So you'll get your shear stresses, you'll get your, uh, uh, you will get your, <laughs> your normal stresses, and that's it. So that's all you're kind of dealing with there. And then you could, again, you could draw it across. So once you find this point, you know, it's just a straight line across, and you can get those values here. So this obviously is not a kind of super efficient way of solving. So if you're asked, more circle, that tool is used to answer this question. What is 
the principal stress state? Or what is the, uh, what is the maximum shear stress state? Uh, or when, what angle is, is you know, sh uh, shear maximized? That's when you want to use more circle. If you want to find the stress state of any kind of arbitrary, you know, uh, rotation of, of, of initial stress state, we want to use our linear algebra method. So this is where this equation comes to play. If I want to find what's the new coordinate system at some arbitrary rotation, I'm going to define my stress sensor like this. So let's go ahead and start to write that down in Mathematica and get that code written and ready to go. So, and we can double check our answer here. So we've already shown, uh, so let's actually, uh, before we kind of move on to this, uh, we had this as our sigma one, this is our sigma two. Uh, you can double check uh, your answers. So we knew that the radius, uh, sorry for that, radius was six times square root of two. So this was our sigma one. We said also for more circle that sigma one is just gonna be uh, center plus uh, radius. So 24 megapascals is exactly this value here. So our answers match. Our sigma two is gonna be the center minus the radius. These answers match. Megapascals, this is pascals, uh, so they match. So again, we've, we've calculated, you know, to answer this question of, uh, excuse me here, to answer the question of draw more circle to find the principal stress state, we answer this question and we know the angle where this occurs. So we've confirmed using both massive methods what is the angle this occurs at? 22.5, answer that there. 22.5, answer that there. What is our sigma one? 24 megapascals, uh, you know, approximately. 7.5 megapascals sigma two. That's it. That's your answer there. What about this one? We said that this is our tau xy max. Well, what's our radius? Same value here. So we're getting the same answer multiple ways. Now, Let's go do some linear algebra really quickly here. So we need to first define our rotation matrix. So I call this my T matrix. So that is going to be C squared plus S squared plus, or not plus, excuse me, C squared, S squared. And this is just, again, in the notes. Uh, 2 times S times C here. Now S squared, C squared minus two times s times c and finally we are almost done stay with me s times c s times c and then c squared minus s squared so let's look at that and actually we'll define up here c equals cosine of theta in degree degree mode and then S, oops, excuse me, get that out of the way. S is equal to sine of theta. In degree mode. So this is our T matrix. Let's look at it in the matrix form. So here it is. So my initial stress state was what? It was Oh, excuse me. Is this like right here? So there are multiple ways I could do that. If I just want to focus on what is the what is the new stress state in the one two plane or in the x y plane, I uh, all I have to kind of I have to rewrite my so let's just say stress x y. I have to rewrite this um, in a little bit different notation. So twenty two megapascals, um, six as you'll see in the notes, and then finally uh, right here. Uh, and let's see that. excuse me, we are going to do uh, not ten, uh, ten and six. So stress x y. If I dot that with t matrix, and then I set theta goes to thirty degrees because uh, we're doing clockwise rotation. That's it. That's my value. What if I set my this T matrix to 22.5. You uh, get these values as well. So again, we're doing kind of our rotation here. So that's it. Uh, so if you want to find what is your uh, stress tensor for kind of any of these values, that's all we're kind of uh, going through here. So 
we're calculating that, you dot it, and that's all you have to do. Um, one quick, actually, sorry, I messed up my notation here. Um, so it's actually T matrix dot stress X, Y. That gives us this value, which should look a little bit familiar uh, up here. We could double check that right here. So you could see that those values are essentially the same. So we're calculating and double checking our answers. So you could kind of see that just a little bit uh, up here. And we can go one step further. What if I do T matrix dot stress XY? Look at our matrix is diagonalized again. So we're getting the same value that we just got previously. So we're good to go. Like we we've, we've solved essentially this problem. We don't have to kind of worry, you know, we're getting the same answer over and over again. Look at we've just recovered our sigma one, our sigma two, and then we know that when we maximize our normal stresses, that shear stress goes to zero. Now, we could even take this a step further. So if I want the full 3D tensor, all I'm just going to do is do T matrix dot uh, stress slash dot beta goes to 30.5 and clockwise, uh, excuse me, counterclockwise rotation and, or 30. Just to end. You can also switch this to negative. It's going to be actually the value that we uh, got to talk about there. Actually, excuse me. Uh, our rotation is going to be minus 30. You can play around again uh, with all these different uh, kind of values. Uh, so once you include that, we're going to do this and actually put it in matrix form. So you can get the full 3D matrix or 3D tensor of your stress at a rotation of 30 degrees. So now you find these different off diagonal components uh, occurring here. So that's essentially what, we're, we're, uh, what we've got here. So this is a much nicer way. Again, you're just using uh, linear algebra to kind of solve these problems. So we could also take it a step further. So um, you can look at this up a little bit later, but if you want the eigenvalues of any ten, uh, tensor, so stress. So this will be the full or the actual normal stress state, uh, your principal normal stress state for the full 3D tensor. And again, our values match to what we've seen previously. So eigenvalues is an operator that diagonalizes your matrix. So it solves essentially this series of uh, kind of, again, linear algebra, linear expressions. Uh, so yeah, you can kind of play around uh, and double check your answers using this method. So it's a really nice way to, again, see what's happening uh, in your system and uh, kind of double check your answers whenever you're, uh, whenever you're solving these problems. So it's a really nice way, again, just to double check and make sure, oh, excuse me, I've got a, I need something that's a little bit off here. Uh, and I'm going to shift this, shift this. And now we can see uh, the match down here. Now we have our match. So I'm going to pull this up. Something was bothering me up there, <laughs> and I knew why. Some equation was going wrong. We don't, we can't, you know, that should always match. So, just what we see here. So, at 30 degrees, 24 megapascals, 7.86 minus two points. It's perfect. Our answers are all matching. We're good to go. Uh, there was just a little uh, issue in my kind of code here. I forgot a minus sign. Um, but that's it. That's what we're kind of working with here. So, you could double check your answer. It's, you know, three ways of double checking your answer to make sure you've gotten the correct expression. Now, one last thing. I know this is a really long video. Uh, thanks for sticking with me. One last thing that you could kind of play around with uh, when you're looking at a stress tensor. And really, you could draw basically what's called a, a full 3D Moore circle and figure out what are your principal, your three principal stresses. So it's just like we saw previously for the uh, eigenvalue values. Um, and you could double check, and we'll actually double check that in just a second. So let me. Take a step back here. So I'm going to draw now three more circles. Uh, I know it's going to be <laughs> fairly tough, but there's a little trick that's going to allow you to work with this problem a little bit nicer. So zero. So I'm going to break this down into three different planes. So I'm going to call this, um, this is going to be my one, two plane or XY plane. 
this is going to be uh, the values that I circle here are going to be my here, 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 and here. That's going to be my 1, 3 plane, again, using our oral old notation. And then my red is going to be my, uh, my 2, 3 plane. So I'm going to grab this guy. Actually, it's just going to be, oops, undo that. This one, this one, this one, and this one as well. That's going to be my 2, 3 plane. So I'm going to draw the more circle just like we've done previously. So I'm going to do my more circle tau and theta. We already know what is uh, what it is for 2 and 3, but let's kind of draw a couple more more circles here. So I'm going to do my, uh, actually, I'm going to save a little bit of space here. So I'm going to draw one like this. Tau here, another one here, tau here, and then the last one. Tau and then here. So let's start with one that's a little bit, I mean, uh, we just did the one for blue, and actually let's, the one two. So we figured out that the center of that circle was at 16 megapascals. Again, we had our circle. This is not drawn to scale. Uh, but we figured out that our sigma 1 in this scenario was equal to 16 plus 6 root 2 MPA. Our sigma 2 was equal to... So sigma 1 is your maximum normal stress. Our sigma 2 was 16 minus 6 root 2. So this was our 1, 2 more circle. How do we draw the coordinates for, let's do the 1, 3 here. Well, what are my points? So I have a point, again, it's the x, y coordinate. So right, this is my normal stress right here, and this is a normal stress right here. The rest of those values, this is shear stresses. So those are my kind of coordinates. So my coordinates are the normal and then the shear. So I have a point right here at 22, and I have a point at 0, 0. How do I draw the Mohr circle? Well, there's two points here. I'm going to connect it like this. So this is where I'm lying on my stress state. What stress state is this? I'm already in my principal normal stress state. So my rotation to get to my principal normal stress state at theta is zero. I'm already there. I'm already maximizing. My sigma one for this problem is 22. My sigma two, the, lo the lowest uh, normal stress, is zero. What is my, what's my, what's the value here? Well, this line is 20, the diameter is 22. The radius here is what? Half of that. So this is 11, 11 uh, megapascals for my shear. How, what would be the rotation that I need to get to my, uh, to get to my maximum shear stress? Well, to get to, from here to here, what's the angle of rotation? Well, I'd have to rotate two theta equals 90 degrees to get my max Shear. So again, here's my sigma 1 and sigma 2. This is my sigma 1 and sigma 2 for this value right here. Now, you can do the same thing for the last. What are my coordinates here? Well, I had the 0, 0 again, and now I have 10. Again, draw the circle. What's the rotation? I'm already in the principal normal stresses. I don't have to do any rotation to get to principal. To get to maximum shear, I just have to do that 2 theta of 90. And then this time, it's going to be a value of 5. But here, my sigma 1 is 10 megapascals, and my sigma 2 is going to be 0 megapascals. Now, with these values, in this, I can determine my full 3D Mohr circle. So I can figure out what is my sigma 1, my sigma 2, and my sigma 3. What are my largest? And I'm talking about sine. So if it's a negative value, it is small. So largest, second, and third. So when I'm figuring out what is my maximum sigma 1, I'm going to look at all the sigma 1s and see which one is the largest. So 16 plus 6 would be 22, but it's 6 times root 2. So my largest sigma 1 is 16 plus 6 root 2. What's my largest sigma 2? Which of these sigma 2s is the largest? Well, it's 16 minus 6 root 2. 
What's my smallest sigma 2? So which of these sigma 2 is the smallest? Well, it's a tie for 0. That's it. And you can also kind of show this graphically here. So I'm going to erase up here for a second. I'm going to draw one more tau is y curve. So you can draw the full 3D more circle up here. Let me erase a little bit there. So my first, let's draw the blue. So this more circle starts at uh, basically a value of 16 minus 6 root 2. Again, this is going to be 16 plus 6 root 2. So this is one circle right here that we are going to uh, draw in just a second. So I'm going to draw this right. Uh, so 16, 6 root 2. I'm going to draw this right here. So this big circle right there. I'm going to draw my other circle is going to be where, uh, let's look at the red. So it's going to be 0 and uh, 10. So you can kind of draw this right here, there. And you could, you know, uh, draw the rest of these circles um, as well. So 0 and 22. But the main point that uh, you're, we're going to kind of come across here is you will be able to kind of draw, uh, actually, excuse me. So let me redraw this in just a second. So if that, let me, excuse me for just a second. So if I want to draw my full 3D more circle space, I know that this is going to be 16 plus 6 root 2. This is going to be 0, and this is going to be 16 minus 6 root 2. So I'm going to draw a circle that goes from here to here. I'm going to draw a circle that goes from here to here. And there's going to be a huge circle that goes from there to there. So this is my sigma 1. This is my uh, your sigma 2 here. And this is going to be your sigma 3 here. But again, point here is we've identified what are in the full, if we have a perfect, you know, in the full 3D stress state, what is our normal principal stresses? These are these values here. So 16 plus 6 uh, root 2, 16 minus 6 root 2, and then 0. Double check that again, once again, with our uh, with our Mathematica notebook. So we said the eigenvalues when we diagonalize this matrix: 16 plus 6 square root 2 megapascals. We match it once again. What about this? Minus root 2. And our last value was zero. We're matching all these values once again. So again, it's a way to double check your answer. If I ask you for the full 3D Moore circle and uh, to kind of give me the principal stress state or the principal stress value, sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma 3, which is going to be extremely important once we get to uh, basically, uh, or actually which is going to be extremely important once we get to yielding, that's your answer. That's it. And uh, this is a very long video. I appreciate you for uh, kind of sticking with me. Uh, if you have any questions, you want to kind of do more examples, there's lots in the problem set. Um, there will definitely be one of these in the exam. So. Uh, please let me know if there's any questions, and I'll be happy to kind of do a couple more examples. So I hope that's helped, um, and yeah, I'll see you all next time. Thanks.